turn on your doing that now. Yeah, it's on. Uh, you might need to re log in. Um, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not going to knock that you all feel that way, and I can totally understand why you feel that way. I just would like you to understand that where I'm coming from might be different, mm -hmm. and that this is still something that, as a society, we're kind of dealing with, and it really hasn't gone away for me and for many people and mm -hmm. probably for our entire society. I mean, I don't think that racism against African American people has stopped. Do you think it can ever stop? Because it sounds like you think it's like it's so deeply rooted in American history that there's no way we could ever not be that. And if you do feel that way, is there any reason we're striving so hard for for equality and human rights and all those things. Well, if I were being completely objective, no, and I don't, and I think it would be a waste of time. Hmm. Uh, if I'm being optimistic, I would say there, there are conditions that are possible that could do that, but mm -hmm. it has to come from not only uh, our society. Mm -hmm. But also, it has to come from African American people as well. Okay. And I don't think that's ever going to happen. Why not? Because we're not going to let it go. Who's not going to let it go? Black people. Oh, okay. So then. Well, doesn't it would that mean still be... that the country is willing to change, but black people aren't willing to change? I don't think either are willing to change. I think that there, while there are more people that are either ignorant or uh, accepting of the history of our country and willing to move past it, there are a lot of people that are not. Okay. There are more people that are not. And you don't think that ratio will ever change for the better? It, it'll get closer and closer to 50, but I don't think it'll be a majority. So you think like it balances out at 50? Mm -hmm. Just like there's always going to be uh, racial bigots. I think it's some, um, and I think that's built into like human nature, just prejudice in general. Okay. And that our society is kind of, it's easy to do that. It's really easy to be prejudiced and to have bias to people based on the color of their skin. Mm -hmm. Because we're a, a country built on immigrants, of people that are different. Mm -hmm. And our differences are scary. For a lot of people, it's difficult for them to imagine someone is different than them in a in a fundamental way. Okay. And it could be difficult for them to even imagine, okay, uh, they're dealing with life differently than me. They don't have the same circumstances as me, and I can't really relate to them in that way. But I have to, I have to at least empathize with them. Isn't that what we're striving for? So, so every day is the the idea that people have different experiences, and we should be respectful of those. Well, I do believe that people should, and people try to. Mm -hmm. It's human nature not to, and a lot of people stop trying. Hmm. But does that mean that they're bigots? I would say that everyone is a bigot in some aspect. I would agree, but um, I mean, well, here I'm talking too much. Do you have anything to say about this? Game? I'll I'll interject mine too. Okay. Um, I would agree that everybody has some bigoted views within them. Whether or not they they act on them is one thing, though. Yeah, I I would think so too. I feel like being able to control yourself is part of being a human being mm -hmm. you have the choice and you can make that choice or you can you can let your own you know basic human nature take over well I mean it's not necessarily 100% related to the topic but I do feel that absolute equality is a fallacy uh, I think there's always going to be differences in people's opinions 
worldviews, genetic makeup, like just people are born different. Some people are born with uh oh, you wanna go back up to the mountain where the where we didn't where we didn't find the dragon. Oh okay. Um Yeah, we're just always going to be different and that's not necessarily a bad thing. But I guess there's a certain level of like civil civility that we all strive for in which we don't act upon our our beliefs of uh that we're di- that we're all different to an extent because we should i think we should act upon our beliefs that we're different like but we, i we, don't think that it should matter in in whether we respect each other yeah well that's respect is is a different thing like I can respect someone that's less, that's in a less to do position than I am because I understand that within the context of their situation, they're still striving. They're still in a very strong, like they're they're strong in their own position, in their convictions, their positions. Maybe their material wealth is less than mine. Maybe um, they have divorced parents. Whatever it is. Um, like my respect for someone is relying on their co- the context of their situation but that doesn't mean that I don't see the differences it means that like I see it and I acknowledge and I take into consideration as fairly as I can did I just say a bunch of words <laughs> no I, I took in everything that you said okay I mean, it's nothing I can comment about. That's who you are. Mm. Well, no, I think you should be able to comment upon me. Like, I'm not saying that who you are is bad. I actually like that. Mm. I mean, the only thing I could do is give you the Facebook like. Uh, okay. Oh, let's see. Okay. A dragon that's weak against fire. And yeah, physical it's attacks? Maybe it's a Chinese dragon. <laughs> it's a Chinese myth dragon. So this is getting into the idea that uh, the Malakim, uh. when they uh, when they take in too much bad bad Uh-oh. juju, yeah, yeah, yeah. they become dragons. So this used to be a guy, yeah, but it used to be a Malakim. Jesus Christ! I was stunned. That's wow. right. Wow. Uh, let's see. I need to stop being stunned. Jesus Christ! I guess we need to be in front of it. Yeah, this tail spike does a lot of damage. Yep. Ow. Hey, yeah. So I guess that's our thoughts on it. Do we want to move on to a different topic? Uh, sure. I mean, I'm <laughs> fine. Uh, other topic that came about was automation. Automation. Not, well, yeah, how automation can affect our society eventually. Automation will take over so much of our workforce that we won't have jobs anymore. That mm. the basic labor in- intensive stuff and even the knowledge based stuff will be so No worries, Kara. Have fun with your with your lurking. No. She's Are you leaving or lurking? No, she's just lurking. Okay. But people apparently are visiting her house though. So. What's wrong? Oh, this is something he cares about. Well, he has a uh, he has a strict no kill policy.
Subs are different from what he said. Yep. Fucking okay, voice actors taking liberties. <laughs> But we do. Sadly. Or at least you know. <laughs> you, are you making the connection, you yeah? know? Oh, what? That, I haven't made any connections. I've stopped paying attention to anything that happens okay. in the story, so. Got it. All I know is that Aizen turns into a dragon. That, that, that's about it. But well, there's that part. I guess you've just, you've just revealed your card right there, then. <laughs> anyway, so... Wait, does that happen at the end of the game? You just have to find out. I don't know. But you do. I do know. But I'm going to say I don't know. <laughs> That's going to suck. Is it? Dragons are badass, man. They are. They're super cool. And they're wise. And they're real. They can't talk! Does, does that mean they're not wise? She smacked people because he's, she's in a blind rage. Or was there more to her actor actions? Maybe she's just so beyond our intelligence that she can't communicate with us. Maybe we're, not, we're the ones who are intelligent in her. Maybe you're all full of shit. No. Like, if, if an action is... In, is not explainable by us, that doesn't necessarily mean it's an unintelligent thing to do. You're all trolling me. No. Forget this. Well, if we really want to talk about that, I mean, like, that is... No, I'm actually, I actually believe that. Like, we can do to our best, of, to the best of our abilities, we try to understand why people do things. Or, not necessarily people, but why things happen. But if there's something that we can't explain, it doesn't necessarily mean it's inherently dumb. It just means that we can't explain it. So then that would mean that I'm dumb. And I yeah. Don't want, yeah. I don't want to think that I'm dumb. 
Well, we don't want to be dumb, but sometimes we have to accept, accept that we are dumb. That's why when you're in college and you sit in the front, you ask a lot of questions. Your your acceptance that you are more ignorant than the professor actually allows you to learn more than the person in the back who thinks, "Oh no, I know everything." Unless that person's genius. Unless he actually does know everything. <laughs> And, yeah, he, he has some credence to say he knows everything. But I would argue that no human knows everything, and that we're all. Imperfect,、uh, ignorant creatures. I heard a random statistic about how the smartest person in the world only knows like two percent of the world's knowledge or some shit like that. Yeah, no, there's way too much fucking knowledge for any one person to know, and I think it's empowering to accept that we just don't know. And it's not so much that we can't know. We can't know. It just means we don't know, and we set off on our way to figure that out. That I can agree with, but I don't want to be dumb. I don't want to be dumb either. That's why I spend so much time trying to learn shit.、Um, but going back, the、I、dragon can't、does. surf here. Well, because you haven't、uh, found the, the the green point.、Uh, somewhere in the map, you have to、uh, get to find it. It's somewhere here. That sucks. So like, whenever you get to a new map, it's sort of like the the MMO's way of. Uh, like you can only get your flying mount after you get to the level cap of this area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Or you've explored a hundred percent of it. Yeah, but in this case, you just have to like when you get to a new area, you have to find the. Oh,、uh, uh, the jeep. Because the board is more of like a.、Uh, let's take the edge off of backtracking. Oh.、Uh, and、uh, less of a.、Uh, this is your permanent mode of transportation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's pretty good. That's a pretty good mechanic to add into the game.、It、makes sense. So I think I wish it went faster. I'm. <laughs> I've been staring at that jerky for like. Are you want some? An hour. Want some jerky? I would. I would love some jerky. Do you like jerky? I love jerky. Do you like jerky in your mouth? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He accepted it. Sick. This means that must mean you're fucking starving. Um. No, actually, I've been thinking about having. Uh, breakfast a lot earlier in the morning so I can stay a little bit more awake. And, and have also, have you been thinking about jerky in your mouth? Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> What am I? I'm gonna decline、little? the state. <laughs> decline the state now. Leave me alone in your jerky bed comments. God. Come on, you can thank you can thank that that one over there for it. For jerking your mouth. Hey Kate, you want to you want to put for for more reasons than one. Hey Kate, do you want to? Do you want to do you want to feed him jerky? Do you want to see jerky go in his mouth? I think she preferred to watch you feed him the jerky. We're turning that kind of channel. That that's probably a channel somewhere.、Right? Oh yeah, I'm just sure. Just like watch this girl feed me food. Yeah, I'm sure. I wonder if that would get views or it would like not have views because it's so inherently misogynistic. <laughs> <laughs>、uh, unless it's the other way around. Watch my boyfriend feed me food. Yeah. I, okay, I can see that figure. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that figure too. Oh, I have lifesavers too. Oh, those are cool. Lifesavers are not food. So awesome! Thank you. You're James. Tricky. Oh. Oh man. Oh man. Hmm. We just call that channel. Uh huh. I still don't understand the the watch me eat channels. Oh, <laughs> those are weird. I don't either, but no, it's Titania, man. It's not Titania. They make money. This is not Titania. This is Logers. Oh, Titania is the island. Oh, the prison island. We've gotten three wins three times in a row. Yeah, we're kick kicking ass. Take your names. No, just kicking ass. Damn. They don't care. They don't care who they're, they're asking. Them. <laughs> I think that's what taking names means, right? 
I don't actually know what a taking name is. Um. Is that like assassin lingo? I I don't think so. I think I feel like it's a it's kind of a which one calls it? It's a boisterous kind of thing. You you like put a notch on your belt. Kind of like dueling. You you tell people who you've you've beaten because just beating anybody doesn't mean anything. Wow. Okay. So it's just like I didn't just beat up with some guy in the street. I beat up like the guy. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, do we want to have the conversation about automation? I mean, I have some views on that. Okay. What are your views? I think that if we ever get to a situation where the entire world is automated, uh, it requires humanity to reevaluate what value humans have. Um, right now, jobs are based on the idea that humans provide value through employment. Like... Whether it's menial labor, or it's scientific research, or it's uh, financial um, whatevering, mm -hmm. um, we pay people, ideally we pay people proportionally to what value they provide in society. But if we get to a situation where the machines do everything that are valuable to us, mm -hmm. and there's nothing left for humans to do, does that mean that we just get rid of humans, or does that mean that we reevaluate what humans can uh, can provide society? Well, I was having this conversation with Tenerock before, and I I mentioned that well, just to, just go back in context. Right now, we live in a society where we pay taxes and those taxes go to certain things they could go to programs to support human beings they go to you know military and whatnot they go to education to give us skills now i feel like in order for government to continue to pay itself it, it's gonna have to find an income to tax People are going to have to pay for things, and people are going to have to uh, pay taxes for it. But when we no longer have money, government's not going to have that anymore. We're not going to be in a position to give taxes, so government's going to stop working. Well, that's that's under the assumption that we need the government at all, right? Because like if we if we go on if we go on with the assumption that the world has been automated to the point where we no longer have to work. Do we even need a government to do anything? I feel like still handling the situations that come with, uh, what is it? I feel like we would still need to handle situations like diplomacy, military, war. Uh, we would still need to organize education and whatnot. Unless we somehow make that automated too, like we would just upload information in our heads. I guess, I guess okay, I guess we need to define how much automation we're talking about, like... What 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 do you envision this automated world to be? Oh, you found the point. Yeah. Yay. Um. It's on the map. Oh, <laughs> they don't okay. even hide it. I forgot. Oh yay! Great. Um. Yeah, like honestly, like, I feel like. Are you talking about just like the manufacturing jobs? Or are you also talking about like banking? Are you talking about science? I mean, everything could end up being like, automated. Like science, science doing research could just be done by an AI. Yeah, Banking could be done by an AI. Yeah, theoretically, if we get to the point, we can find a way to automate those things. Yeah, and eventually there will be very little to probably nothing that uh, any person that's uneducated or not even uneducated, even people with like master's degrees, maybe they will lose their jobs. Mm -hmm. And eventually... The government is going to have to decide something. They're going to either have to start taxing robots or they're just going to have to fold up shop and be like, oh, wait a minute, hold on. Never mind, I'm sorry. Oh, no, go for it. Yay. Uh, they're going to have to decide whether they're going to start taxing robots mm -hmm. or taxing the companies that use robots. Oh, hey, Casey. Oh. Or mm -hmm. they're going to just fold up shop because it's what's going to happen. My idea 
And again, I feel like I'm disagreeing with Tenarak a lot. And I, I don't like that. I feel like we should agree think, on more things. I think disagreement is the, uh, is the, uh, dissonance. <laughs> it's what, it's what makes life interesting. <laughs> like, you can find, this is an entirely different topic, but it's easy to have a friend that you agree with on everything. But I think a more valuable friend is someone that you can discuss and disagree upon topics civilly and broaden each other's horizons. Mm -hmm. But going back to your point, too faster. I want to enjoy it. Then you shouldn't have eaten while you were making the point. <laughs> I'm sorry. My point is, mm -hmm. I think that the plan's gonna go into chaos. Hmm. Before they find a solution, they're gonna go to chaos. I don't think that the way that our government, specific any government, is built in a way to address this problem before it becomes a problem. Oh, well, I I agree. I think I humanity it would be too slow to change to accept the new norm. But I mean, unless we have more conversations like this and start bringing it up and actually doing something about it. Look, mm -hmm. well, it's there, like, there is more likely I'm sorry. There is more likely that we will let people starve then we actually say, oh, I'm going to tax somebody's company so that I can pay for someone to live? I'm going to have to give people money? Here's the thing. To I... do nothing? I'm just saying that the people who are making the point that they don't want to pay money for medical expenses of other people are going to have a fit if they ha say that, oh, I have to pay someone to live. No, I and, and, I, and I don't disagree with that at all. Um, however, w one way or another, it's going to happen, and we're going to have to do figure something out. Um, that's the point. How we get to it is... Well, there's no way really for me to be able to protect that kind of thing. That's just going to happen when it happens, and we'll just have to deal with it when we get to it. Um, but the fact of the matter is that we do know that this is a distinct possibility, so we need to start talking about it and seeing what we can do and what the various kinds of things that can happen mm. along the way. However, I think there's something that um, that seems to be missing in these conversations a lot, and it's the fact that we're talking about mm -hmm. essentially automation of where the hell do you get to Titania again? You click on Titania front door. Oh, I thought that was like a title <laughs> block. Nice, nice. Um, if we reach a level where there's so much automation that everything can be provided by that automation. Um, why was the, what was the point of, before that, why do we pay people to do jobs? Yeah. And then going bef even beyond that, uh, what is the point of money? And that's what I was talking about. It's just like, that's why I was saying we need to reevaluate what humanity, humanity is really providing itself. Because like, money is a construction to represent an individual's uh, impact and um, uh, contribution to society and you can use that representation of contribution to get back something for yourself mm -hmm. at least that's how I see money and it kind of gets thrown into when when you see people who are like day traders mm -hmm. like do those people necessarily even provide any um, value value to society if all they're doing is just churning the money around to make more money well uh, and you, I, I really don't think so but <laughs> like I, I would say that they do in the sense that they protect us from other countries possibly using uh, our finances against us are they and doing that though <laughs> I'm not saying they are but I'm saying that as a function theoretically okay. I think that they that's a value that they could have okay. maybe it's out of control maybe the ratios are out of whack but just take it. Um, but I would say that that's what um, at the base level they're providing. Um, but then, yeah, if we get into a situation where we have the the automation that's just completely automated and no one can really do anything that's mm -hmm. providing anything, mm -hmm. why do we need humanity? So, well, here's here's where we're. 
here's where we're going. Mm-hmm. Senator Rocco believes that we're going to make some changes and that's just going to have to happen. Mm-hmm. You believe that humanity is just going to kill each other and no. or we no. might just not we might get rid of humans no no i haven't even gotten to that point no no he's just asking a, a question like, <laughs> what value because i don't believe machines will ever be in a situation where they can do everything right and i think there's something humanity can do in the wake of our robot overlords um oh I guess it's a different out- outlook on it. Are we are we talking about complete automation for the purposes of human human life, or are we talking about complete automation in which he, in which machines are so self automated that they no longer need to serve anything? Reiterate that. What do you mean? Like, um, are, are we talking about robots becoming a self sustaining system that no longer needs any to serve any? Um, no. Any humanity? Or are we talking about just like we have perfect automation for our needs? Perfect automation for our needs. Okay. Uh, yeah. No. I, 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 yeah. That that's a, I think a completely different conversation. Yeah. And we talk about com- our computers needing human rights. Well, I mean. Well, we had. We can fucking pull up that episode of Star Trek where Data goes on trial. Well. Like whether okay. or not he is a sentient being. Because, like, I mean, the argument in that was that he is a sentient being because he can do everything that qualifies as sentience to us. Uh Uh-huh. And just because we made him with our hands doesn't doesn't entail that he is not sentient. Doesn't take away his agency. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much you may fucked up. No, we didn't. Fuck no, up. we didn't we created, at all. We created. It's like when you create. We create babies, mm-hmm. and just because we don't consciously do it, doesn't mean we don't take responsibility for that. If we created life with our hands instead of our <laughs> uterus and penis, does that make it any less of a life? And I guess it depends. If that starts going into like, what do you consider life? And what do you and what other aspects like a soul or something like that can be added to somebody but again that really depends on religion and that would be no, a whole other can of worms that's why it definitely gets into uh, sticky territory because yeah, like, like, w- like where do, where do you go from it being a laptop to fucking sentient <laughs> <laughs> like where's the line there I think it's a little further down <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's further down but we already have like deep learning uh, AIs yep that are learning on their own. Does that count as sentience? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, we might move the goalposts a lot with that. Yeah. Because eventually, you know, they're going to break what we assume is sentience and then we'd have to move it further back. Yeah. Well, that's like, are we going to be rigid in our definition of sentience? Or are we going to keep moving sentience to meet our new uh, standards? Yeah, our new standards. Um, our more I modern think, sensibilities. I think, considering human nature, yes, we're we're going to keep moving. We're going to move the goalposts. We're yeah. going to keep doing that. Um, that might be because I don't have very much faith in humanity. Well, I think it's appropriate that we move the, the goalpost. Mm. Like we we. Like once upon a time, we didn't consider certain humans to be, to be human. That was kind of where I was going with that, but yeah. I, that might be because I'm still kind of tight. <laughs> well, but, no, that's, I think it's appropriate that humanity expands its definitions of what we accept as a sen- as sentient beings. Well, it's true, mm-hmm. but I think that we do that in accordance to, or in response to us expanding our understanding. If we're moving the goalpost, we're moving it in a way to not expand our understanding, but to limit or remove the validity of someone that could possibly be have, have been valid. Um, a good example, or not a good example, but one legitimate example of moving the goalpost would be Pluto. Pluto was a planet, and we decided, oh... 
there are other things that are similar to Pluto, so it's no longer a planet. Well, no, that's the thing is that <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> we're, but, but we're not declass. We're not saying that it's not a, a celestial body. We're just saying it's not a planet, and that's different from saying something sentient versus not sentient. It's what? like saying, I'm, I'm not Asian. I'm Chinese. Where in societal circumstances you would be the same thing, but you will be right in saying that you are specifically Chinese. Yeah, and that's what Pluto, that happened with Pluto. It's like, we classify this incorrectly at one point. And you could go into the whole thing that the classifications are arbitrary anyways. Like, why the fuck do we call anything other than just for, like, our own conveniences? Big round thing. Yeah, and like, te that... technically, a comet is like an ice meteor. Like, why the fuck do we need to have that d differentiation? And there's probably some, like, scientific, uh, like, necessity to differentiate them. But in and of themselves, it doesn't really matter whether we call it a meteor or a comet. It's still a thing moving in space that probably, if we get near it, we'll die. I mean, and that's where the nuances start coming in. But then you, you should start saying that everything is nuanced. Like, we're both humans, but we're nuanced. Yeah, I mean, this is getting away from the uh, the whole topic of sentience, but well, like I said, in the weeds. You're such a bitch, Lafayette. Like <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> I don't know. He's just so. I thought that was endearing. He. I wish he had a better voice actor. Oh. He's cute. It's like a little brother. It feels so like... That's what they were going for. It feels so disingenuous. Oh, oh. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Anyways. Um, yeah, it's just like, where... I don't even remember what we're talking about. But that, that, in, in either case, you guys were like completely derailed the conversation to a completely <laughs> different topic. The, again, we're, we're going back to society, society yeah, and yeah. and complete automation that mm. fit human needs to the point where we do, don't... In a sense, I guess you can, for argument's sake, state that we don't need jobs anymore. Mm -hmm. Because every job that um, can be handled can be handled by um, robotics. So what do we do now? Well, why don't we get into a situation where we're just like the Greeks? Where every, like, not the majority, not not everyone, but like a lot of people were in a situation where they didn't need to work. Mm -hmm. So all they did was just sit around, talk about philosophy, make art, do things that aren't necessarily necessary for humanity. But I mean, what else are we gonna do? Yeah, like, we have all the food already. We have and yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, they weren't as safe as they thought they were. Yeah, because uh, y yeah, the neighbors knocked on their door. But, yes, um, I would like to believe that. If we ever got into that situation, there would be many of us who believe, who remember history and say, we got to make sure that our machines are able to protect us if something does. Yeah. On our door. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, let's look at. Because theoretically, we've automized our military. Yeah. That, that's a possibility. Theoretically speaking. But... We're, we're already automating our, our military. Yeah. Like, we have less and less people, like, on the ground and more people, more just like, we're going we're gonna to do a, a sweep with a drone. Yeah. Okay, we're going to have this. RCs. Like, we just have this robot kind of like knock the door down and go in and take a camera view of what's going on. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, RC soldier. Yeah, RC soldier. Uh, Rest for a while. Oh yeah. But, um, in my opinion, I think that they're going to try and keep society the way that it is way longer than it really should be. Like, they're going to resist... The, humans and, are going to resist this change vehemently. Okay, and that's fine. Um, if that happens, that happens. We'll have to deal with it, but uh, eventually the change will happen. I, I do agree that it's going to take a very long time. Like, people are going to be so hung up on, like, if you're not doing anything, why should we... Yeah. Why should we give you anything? Yeah. But then... The idea, I think the idea is that if all our needs are automated, why do we need money in the first place? That that that's that's the that's that that's actually the next question. Even it's like like if if we're not inputting to society in the traditional sense anymore, like what's our money even worth at this point? 
do we even need the money? Well, then we're talking about luxury. Yeah. 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 Well, cause, yeah, because like all our well, that's the definition of luxury, right? Luxury is something that's not necessary necessary to life. I think. Yeah. That's what I would consider luxury. That's what I would consider luxury. So, if all our needs are automated, that means that everything that we could possibly want in life that we can't have is luxury. And the only things that we can produce are luxuries. I think our entire economy will collapse. But we might not even have an economy anymore. Do we even need an economy if we have... If everything is automated. And and I think we would. The, but the, the economy would be run on other things. Rather. It would be more based on like resource value. Because uh, we would have to like replace our robots and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's, that's what I was going to say. Is that um, the, the only point of, of the economy would be our literal, our what natural resources we would need to keep that automation going. And I guess that could, that just that just takes a step back to again, what are we defining as complete automation? Yeah, you could say that we've automated our repair, we've automated our machines so well that they can repair themselves. <laughs> That'd be crazy. And they can go out and be like, okay, uh, robot X two one A is diff- uh, dysfunctional. We're going to go out and get the materials needed to replace it. Hmm. And humans had nothing to say about that. <laughs> then we're going back to like Wally. Have Possibly. You seen, have you guys seen Wally? I have not, yeah. but I know the uh, uh, the gist Wally, of it. Wally is. Um, I, I I know the gist of it. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> there are all these people, and they are fat, and they are trying to find a a place to live. Yep. And computers do everything for them. Yeah. And then they become fat, and and can't even move. Well, yeah, I mean, that's out of ignorance. Yeah. Because then at the end of the movie, they they started like the captain. He started reading about what Earth was like. And he was just like, oh, wow, that's really interesting. And he started learning. And then when they finally touched down on Earth, he's like, oh, shit, I'm doing agriculture. Look at me. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think and that's he's like, because... he's because he sucks at it. Because he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh-huh. but that's because they didn't have any automation anymore. I mean, the ship crashed. I think it depends. Like, do you think humans are just here to meet their needs or do you think that we have a inherent like curiosity and uh desire to expand ourselves like i think plenty of people especially those that are disenfranchised if they're offered a situation where just like you get to do nothing you could just sit in your bed, just sit there, watch TV all day, and all your needs are met. You'll never die. That sounds like, oh, man, that sounds wonderful. I don't have to, <laughs> I don't have to work. <laughs> I don't have to worry about my bills. I don't have to worry about my crazy girlfriend. I don't have to worry about any of that. I just sit here. Everything's taken care of. But I think there are many people who would be like, that sounds terrible. Because that means that there's like you've sapped the ever-living shit out of life. Like, there's no reason to live anymore. I'd rather die than that happen. There are a lot of people, or... Should I? Go. See what happens. (laughs) She's watching. If you eat enough, she's gonna eat you. She's waiting, actually, for you to eat enough so that she can't eat you. She wants an excuse. Because, like, once you've eaten enough lifesavers, your blood will be swinging. Why are you scaring me? (laughs) Because it's human. It's fun. And that's really what humans are doing. We're just doing things because we're curious and we want to do these things. But the world doesn't give a shit what we do. So we're getting well, into like existentialism. Yep. I mean, that, that's, that's that. We're, we're always going to be getting going to that point, I guess. Because everything is about existentialism. Pretty much. Why, why do we exist? When, and like the short of it is because I want to. Is it? <laughs> I think so. Like, well, mm. <laughs> because I existed before I had the choice, or did I? Maybe, I, maybe I was in some celestial lobby and I was like, "I'm gonna do this." <laughs> and 
Can you imagine that that's what the afterlife is? You realize that we just played a game. Yeah. Of life. It could be. It's just like fucking Rick and Morty. <laughs> and we're all just like fucking in this giant multiplayer arena. And we're all trying to get a fucking high score, but none of us know where you're trying to get a fucking high score. <laughs> That's and how they some of us do. You have the like, fucking like the Bill Gates and the whatevers, and they're just like, oh, these fucking dumb, dumb. These plebs don't know what they're doing. Plebs they suck at this game. <laughs> right. So, if life is a game, mm-hmm. would that mean that we have any meaning in playing a game? I don't know. Because if it's a game, that means that there's a meta aspect to life, and what happens in here doesn't necessarily mean anything, but does anything out there have any meaning? And maybe our lives do have meaning, because every playthrough... This is getting like Buddhist, you know? <laughs> it's like you... Like, there's an idea in Buddhism that whenever you... You reincarnate, mm-hmm. and you come back in life, and the idea is that you're here to learn lessons. And every time you don't learn that lesson, you're gonna go through a similar life. You keep going through these cycles, until or you worse, you go back, or you go back because, like, oh, not only did you not remember this lesson, you don't remember the last lesson you're supposed to learn. <laughs> so then, you keep going through life, and you're supposed to like learn all these lessons. And the idea is that eventually, when you've learned these lessons, you become enlightened. You've like rose past it. Buddhism sounds a lot more like college. Sort of. Well, but that's why a lot of times they say Buddhism is more of a philosophy. Hold, hold on. It says rest a while. I went. Go, go down. You have you haven't make, make a left or go there. And you haven't. I don't think you've gone down here. You've been kind of going back and forth between the same areas. Yeah. I think you might have to go to your cell, maybe at the very bottom. Is that where you rest? Maybe. I guess. Uh, I don't remember. That's a resting place? Why are there so many people here? Because it's a hideout this now. This is our pirate hideout now. But yeah, so like, taken to the extreme, you could say if this was just like all a game, there's value to our player because they're learning from our playthrough. I suppose so, yeah. Unless it's not a persistent game and we just fucking throw everything out at the end. <laughs> Maybe this is just like a really long uh, game of MOBA. Or Dragon And Guard. when we get, like, when we finally. Or maybe it's like a game of Civ. So, like, when. When you. When. When America has. You know, we've already launched. Really? Um, I don't want to be part of a 4K strategy game. That takes forever. 4X. 4X, sorry. 4K. <laughs> uh, I would be like. Part, I would, wouldn't mind being part of a 40K. Would you like to play? Would you like to play Civilization Forty K? Ooh, would that be an interesting game? If we were, if we saw a a new um, lens of Forty K that we don't normally get to see, because it's kind of unfortunate because basically the entirety of Forty K is based on warfare and intrigue. Yeah, there's like absolutely no culture. Mm -hmm. There's no. Well, there is. There's just no time for it. The yeah. Culture is war. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just how well Every do you... Every race's culture is war, except for maybe the Tau. Who's also, basically... Well, because they're kind of just, like, forced into it. Because they're just like, okay, we're flanked at every angle by, like, crazy space demons and... Wait, were they? I thought I thought the Tau came of their own accord. They were just like... Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure they did. Oh, were they the ones that were just like, we're going to fix this? Yeah, pretty much. They're just like, you know, for the greater good. Oh, if, true enough. You know? Then they've given, given into their greater good fanaticism. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> it's the humans who are in the middle, but they're also, like, well, just... You could, you could argue that the Tau are, like, the humans okay and the humans are like this fucking abomination of what we will become i which i'm totally down i, I we could totally agree with um yeah, i'm about to say like you're down with it <laughs> oh, <I'm... laughs> do you want to fucking sacrifice a thousand people a, a day for the god emperor <laughs> well i mean i guess it's i, I but... guess it's it's the better of both of two evils because if we don't do that then we're gonna get fucking like overrun by chaos exactly right yeah. and i mean like if the god emperor was as godly as they described him to be i mean like how could you not want the god emperor to survive for all of eternity he got killed by his son man who was corrupted by chaos which was and you know he did create his sons to be very powerful so he but he but then he's not as all powerful as you because he fucked up 
<laughs> but he's still very powerful. And my, my singular and unwavering belief in the God Emperor protects me from chaos. Yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> that it's just like religious zealotry protects you against... Uh, yeah. Well, that's, that's the parallel, isn't it? It's that the, the humans of 40k are basically religious zealots. Yeah. And then chaos is like the, the far reaches extreme rationalism. Because, like, it exemplifies all the aspects of rationalism. It's like, um, what is that? Nietzsche is the... Or is it, or is that Nietzsche? Zinch? Zinch. Nietzsche is a, is a, real, is a real, real life writer. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Um, so he, he was just, like, the idea of, like, intellect taken to the extreme becomes, like, manipulative uh -huh. and uh, corrupting. Okay. And then you have, like, gluttony. And pestilence and things like that, uh -huh. which is basically just like biology taken to the extreme. Uh -huh. And then you have what else? Uh, lust. Uh -huh. Lust taken to the absolute extreme. Yes, lust. Or, uh, I would say it's um, lust is a huge um, part of it, but it's actually more indulgence. Yeah, indulgence. Okay. Um, and then you have was a oh, corn, corn, and he, the blood god. He's... Skull for the skull thrones. I mean. The way it manifests, you say it's like war and blood and violence. Mm. But you could say that that's yeah, like yeah, yeah. ambition. Yeah, no. I mean, and just taken to the extreme becomes just like all consuming. It doesn't matter who wins. Yeah. So it would just be like a religion versus um, a, a religion versus a uh, rationalism. <laughs> I mean, you could, you could, you could argue that's that. How I see it. You can argue that. Um, I highly doubt that's what they were going for. Maybe they're not smart enough then. Maybe that's what they should go. Maybe they should write a novel making those parallels. Maybe I should write a novel. I'm not going to write a novel. <laughs> Maybe I should write an email to them saying that this is how I see things. You should run with that idea. Or, or maybe we can, we can use that for my war, war tabletop war game that yeah. I'm going to make. Yeah, and, and it'll just be a mirror of 40k, just like StarCraft was. Exactly! Except it's no longer that, because we <laughs> decided to make it. Yes. Yeah, okay. StarCraft is very different. Well, that's a, Star, I believe StarCraft was originally going to be a 40k video game, and then... Like, oh, I think you're right. Lost the rights. Yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, so yeah. Just like, oh, okay, then we'll just we've, we've already made the assets, so might as well... <laughs> No, you're right. I think yeah, yeah, but yeah, I, I mean, I enjoy it because of the extreme messed up of it. But yeah, I don't know. Why did we talk about forty k again? Because we were talking about what if this life was like civilization. Oh. And because he put four k four x. Oh. Uh, right, right. Yeah, and we didn't. We even further back. We're talking about this because we're talking about like life existentialism. <laughs> we're talking about what if all of this is just a game and we're players. And then before that, we're talking about automation. <laughs> And before that, we were talking about racism. <laughs> which is just a good... Yeah. We, we went in a really convoluted way. I don't know what happens with conversations. Especially when all you think is, is existentialism. <laughs> in relativity. Yeah. That's why. Right. Like, we can we can entertain the, these ideas, but at the same time, I still accept that I'm just like a fucking human, and all I really want to do is jerk off and eat food and and play games and whatever. That's all you want to do. That's not all I want to do. But I accept those parts of myself. Who doesn't enjoy a good jerk? Um, there are plenty of people I can. That's true. There are plenty <laughs> of people. There are plenty of people. But. But. That doesn't mean that I. Don't. <laughs> no, no, Nate. It, it does. It actually does. Actually, they affect you internally. What's wrong? <laughs> the way she turns, <laughs> she was like, "But like, like, what like, now?" <laughs> oh no! I'm your mother. <laughs> oh. Hmm? Oh, right. Wow. Okay. I don't like it. feels so much better. 
Yes, that's an adult thing to do. Oh, God. gonna come here and say something really insensitive. This is the part I hate about little kids. to cry yourself to sleep. They're not rational creatures. Sometimes you just gotta let them cry it out. You seem used to it. I guess you could say that. Rocky usually kept himself together when he was younger. But when he was really little, he had times like this every now and then. Ah. And on that note, let's take off while we can. My liege. I'll do what I can. I couldn't sit sweet and honest with her. How hard it would be to help her not feel that. That's sad. <laughs> That's sad and true. <laughs> At least you know what they want. Where are we going now? We're going off to find Mother Earth Pulse. And oh, man. Least. Do we get a snow area now? We're going back to the chamber. Oh man. I think we should wear swimsuits. <laughs> That's appropriate. Well, I mean, she doesn't feel temperature anymore, so. Oh, yeah, there you go. Wait. Isn't this a place where we burned everything down? Yep. Why are we coming back here? Because <laughs> we need to find those earth pulses, yo. Bro, we, we're wanted men here. <laughs> we're wanted men everywhere. But specifically here. It's okay. It's okay. We, That's why we're hiding behind a box. Yeah. <laughs> Even though we probably can kick their ass. Probably. But we don't want to. Does if we if we killed them before they said anything, then it wouldn't cause a commotion. Dump their. If you kill them with a melee weapon, it's quieter than if you do it with a gun. Good thing none of us have any guns. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Aizen packs one somewhere. But he doesn't use his gun. <laughs> he just punches things. Is it north where we're going? Mm -hmm. No, we're going to that star. And now I can't move. <laughs> Gone to pot. Yeah, it's a it's old saying. I wonder who they're talking about. Oh, so they're calling her the calamity yeah. of this generation? And yet, you know, we told you everything else. Something tells me people are looking into it. Something. 
Over there. 